black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Today's subscriber sponsored request coming in from a repeat offender, Tanya Eller, coming in from down south once again to request another southern meal Salisbury steak with mashed potatoes and bacon green beans. So here's all the fixings, all the things we're gonna need to go ahead and throw this together. Let's get to chefing. Okay, first thing to do, we gotta get our Salisbury steak meat mixture together. So we just got some ground beef right there. It's pretty much like a meatloaf. So an egg in here as well. We got a squirt of ketchup, maybe like a tablespoon or two. We got Worcestershire, maybe a tablespoon. We got a nice bit of pepper tablespoon onion powder, tablespoon garlic, pop a little salt in here, and we got breadcrumb, maybe like a half cup. Get our Michael on, woo and we mix. <laughs> okay, now that we're all mixed in, I'm gonna form some patties out of that guy. And I want these to be fairly substantial, so we're gonna do maybe like third pounds kind of deal. And I'm going to make them kind of overly like that. They don't have to be beautiful or perfect. Salisbury steak is more just about flavor, you know what I mean? <laughs> Doesn't have to be the most beautiful thing ever. But yeah, maybe like an inch thick into like an egg shape, kind of like that. Generally how they're done. So make a couple of those guys. Okay, so here we have it. One, two, three. About an inch thick. Third pound patty. Salisbury steak into the fridge to set up while we cook the rest of these things. All right, so while that meat's marinating, it's mashed tater time. We're gonna put this on high, 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 as high as she goes. We got potatoes and water to the brim. That's gonna be dangerous, but we'll make it, I think. And then we're just gonna let that come up to a boil and then bring them nice and tender and make them into mashed tates. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, we are rolling, 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 rolling. What say? Rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> Roll and boil, but those are far from it. We need fork tender. We'll check back. We'll check back. I'll see you in a bit. We'll see you later. So while those taters are bubbling in the bath there, we're gonna go ahead and get our grain bangs all prepped up and ready. Just had some frozen ones, couldn't find fresh, but these are snipped and cut and ready. And we're gonna go ahead and put that much because that's what came out of the bag. <laughs> Anyway, these just need a quick steam. So what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of water in the bottom, not a lot. And then what we do is bring in our serang, our ceriz wrap, and we get it completely across the top. Nice little rip ski. And then into the microwave to be radiated to steamed in a couple minutes. All right, six minutes later from the microwave, and what do we got ourselves? Some nice steamed beans. We just want to soften them up for when we toss them with the bacon. Okay, my tatey sense is tingling. Let's see where we're at here. Should be good, should be nice and fork tendy. Perfect, we are ready to mash them up. Tatey's strained off, of course. And then for this, we coming in with a big old hunk of butter, some cream. And we're gonna start these off with a pastry wolverine claw. And then we're gonna bring it to the old whipping stick to get them real nice and fluffy. All right, once we've reached this consistency, then what we gotta do next is whip out your stick and get to mixing. Gonna hit them with some salt. Spin that around. But that's how I like them sometimes, just angelic, right? We'll do a Nona. We'll do a Nona for the salt. Angelic potatoes. All right, now we got onion gravy to make. So flame on mid-high, pan on, generous nub of butter in. All right, we go ahead and let this melt down, do a stank thing until it's ready for its onions. All right, butter's where it needs to be. Let's go ahead and get these. Onions joined in the party. Work them around a little bit. So 
We're gonna go ahead and let these get brown and flavorful and then I'll be back. All right, the onion's coming along beautifully, giving us that nice little golden nutty brown color that's smelling delicious and giving us the flavor that we need. So I'd say it's about time we come in with our flour. I'm gonna go in basically a third cup of flour and work that in for our roux. We will cook this off for about a minute. Bring everything together, cook off that floury texture, that granular floury texture. But yeah, just bring it all together for about a minute. Let that flour cook off. Don't burn it. We just want that nice golden blonde looking mixture here. Beautiful development for our gravy. Okay, it should be ready. Four, I have a little bit of beef concentrate here. And then we're gonna go in with our broth. Beef broth, of course. And I'm also adding a nice squirt of Dijon mustard into my gravy today. And we mix. Just let that slowly but surely come together into a nice thick brown onion gravy. Like that. All right, what's next? Well, bacon for these beans, of course. All right, pre-chopped and ready to roll. We're gonna put this on a medium high and let this cook down until almost basically crispy. And we're gonna reserve the fats to toss the beans in at the very end. Okay, a couple minutes in, coming along. Not quite where we wanna be, but we're getting close. A couple more minutes like this and we should be ready to strain this off. Okay, so here we are. We're getting into crispy, but not burnt territory here. So the residual heat when you pull it off of the bacon will continue to cook it to where it's truly crisp. That's the one thing about bacon you need to remember. There's always that last bit of residual heat involved. All right, let's get the Salisbury patty popping. And yes, I said patty as in singular. I'm trying to watch our waist around here. Let that baby go for some minutes here. All right, there we go. Looking good, looking good. Not too bad. Nice little color, pretty crisp. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here then is transfer the gravy pan in and we're gonna bring our spatula oblongata into there. And then we're also going to bring in our patty, our steak, our steak. And so to bring everything back, because it's been chilling for a little bit on the sidelines, a little bit of water. We're going to let this burger cook the rest of the way with that nice smothered heat of a low, slow, medium gravy. Okay, so the last thing we got to do is toss our beans back together, make them nice and hot with this bacon. So like I said, reserve some of the bacon fat just to toss them in. Grease, and then we got our crispy bacon as well. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of garlic just because I feel like I want some garlic and just a tiny pinch of salt because we do have the bacon already. So we go ahead and work this together and get it nice and hot. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, or you could do it like a pro. Miss me with the tongs and hit me with the flip. All right, y'all, gang's all here, time to plate. First things up, we got Sally Berry. Sally Berry steak, boom, right there. Beautiful. Of course, we gotta hit it with a extra top drizzle. We need that. To mush and run down the side. I don't think it would be a Sally if it didn't. A little spindle. We got our mashed potato, AKA banana pudding. <laughs> I kind of like them like this, don't judge me. Sloppy, but I like it. And then we got our green beans and bacon. Right? And we gotta finish off our other stuff. 
with some greens, of course, whatever we got. I got some chives. And that should work. That's it. The nice, runny, mushy, don't judge me, mashed potatoes that I like them like that. Salisbury steak and the beans. This one's for you, Tanya Eller and company. I know she's got many kids down there. So let's get to eating. Had it. <laughs> All right, yo, what up? What's good with y'all? Welcome to today's video. First things first, I think you guys are just too far away for this one. We need to have like a nice up close and personal. Come on in. <laughs> get in here for this home plate. This is a home plate. So in, in the Southern home plate, in the spirit of being together at home, I'm bringing you directly into my face. But we've got the Salisbury steak, the bacon beans, and the whipped potatoes, like nanner pudding. <laughs> How I like it, don't judge me. But this is for Tanya Eller and her fam. She's got a whole gang down there, so shout out to all of you. She came through once again, a repeat offender, for another southern comfort meal. In honor of that, I got myself some sweet tea, peach, of course. <laughs> I think last time I thought of this, so I was like, gotta have a nice little peach sweet tea. Cause we gotta shout out the South. Millions of peaches, peaches for me. Right, that's where all the peaches come from, down South, right? Georgia, Georgia peach. Anyways, cheers to this Georgia peach. Iced tea is so good. And it's like a, it's a half and half. It's not a full sugar. It's a, it's an American style sweet tea. So, all right, let's go ahead and get into this. I'm going to go directly for the steak. This is an item, a menu item that blesses diners everywhere. All through my life, I've, uh, I've always seen Salisbury steaks literally everywhere. I'm just the type of person who never orders it. I always get something else. So this isn't a first for me. I have had them. I think I've probably had authentically maybe two or three in my day. Come on. The dangers of the muck life. All right. That's a good sign. It's so tender. It needs a spoon. But here we go. Onion, gravy, Salisbury steak. AKA onion gravy covered burger patty meatloaf. Mm. So good. Obviously, just like that sweet, caramelized, oniony, salty. Beefy. Just pure comfort food. For me, I don't know why, but other things on the menu in the diner always appeal to me. But you can see, fully cooked, nice and tender, just fall apart. I always chose other things, just the way it was. Okay, let's try these beans. I unfortunately forgot accent. Tanya specified that these need to have accent on them. But I had a dull moment in the grocery store. You know, when you go with your purest intent and then you leave and you get home and you're like, one ingredient. <laughs> Mm. 
all I needed to remember was one more ingredient <laughs> and I couldn't. For those of you who don't know, Accent is MSG essentially, just like a salt style additive, what it mainly is, is addiction in crystallized form, which most, most addictions come in apparently, sugar, cocaine, heroin pills, things like that. But most things that taste really, really good, fast food, Chinese food, MSG or, or accent. The last place I worked in, cooking used a lot of accent. Now these mashed potatoes are something else. Look at that. They be crazy. Baby food. So, so soft. Soft. For some people, it might gross you out a little. I love it. They just go down like no effort required. You know what I mean? It's a perfect drink. It goes down nice and smooth. I like it. Now here's a little something something. I brought an offender. Is this an offender? Is this a, a fashion faux pas? <laughs> a, a fair faux pas? I brought myself some ketchup. <laughs> now I personally think it, it goes because it's basically burger, meatloaf, gravy. But are you offended out there? I don't think so. Because in my best estimation, <clears throat> in my best estimation, that just belongs that could also just be my Northern Ontario white boy Canadian seeping into this situation. This reminds me too, guys, I got to tell you about this, this ketchup right here in car eating videos, I randomly have run across, uh, sun spun ketchup packages and I professed my love for them to you in those videos. And the other day I went to uh, the like bulk wholesale club, food wholesale club in my city. And I ran across sunspun ketchup. Because they don't sell it in like regular bottles in the store. And uh, I ran across it. And there's like, you know, the ones at the hockey arena <laughs> that are like this big with the pump. I bought it. <laughs> I'll have ketchup for like probably the year. I would say a couple liters. It 
and hear this. Brought it up to the register. In my head, I'm like, I'm thinking that's gotta be at least 11, 12 bucks. I would guess. She rang it up. It was four ninety seven. And I was like, are you telling me that this whole time I could have been getting like a half a year supply, eight months of my favorite ketchup for the price of one normal bottle? <laughs> Crazy. You really do be saving when you buy in bulk. Lesson learned. I was also in there uh, cruising and perusing and they have like all of the craziest classic candies, like so many different candies to choose from. But I had recently been looking for in other stores and I could never find them in the corner store. My favorite candy, they're not old school, they're new school. And they're called um, strawberry like milkshakes or strawberry float or something like that. Anyways, it looks like a Coke bottle and the top half is white and the top half is pink. And the chew of them is halfway between those foamy bananas and the bottom of a green frog kind of deal like you blend those two and you get like this texture and i don't know if you remember juiced up pigs but i mean, dare used to make them but they used to be these pigs and they used to come in like strawberry banana or something like that and then one other flavor and they were my favorite but these strawberry like milkshake bottles are like my favorite 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 and uh so I dip into the uh, candy aisle and the first thing I see is just a bag, like huge of these, of these strawberry milkshakes, my favorite candy. So I scooped a bag of that. <laughs> and I've been snacking on them on the regular I haven't even made a dent. That said though, I have like a handful maybe per day. I'd say after about 15, they get pretty redundant and then I'm pretty much satisfied. Just like I'm satisfied right here, right now. Whole plate down. beautifully perfect home cut or home style meal hit the belly right not too hard and it was delicious very very good salisbury steak not a thing i usually eat all things i love to eat just never ever usually crave or consider them i don't know why it's just a thing for me but still a great meal, like a great meal that I would definitely <clears throat> get again and again. It just, for some reason, other meals trump it. So, I don't know, let me know your feelings down below if you're a, a Sal's steak order or if in the diner you kind of choose something else over this. All right, so till the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well. Stay true.